Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite game on the lip. We're going to jump back into some more ANA Arnhem 44, Operation Market Garden. Now, uh, we're going to start with the air supply phase. Now, the air combat phase is first, but I'm doing the supply phase first just because I've only got one roll to do and I just want to go ahead and get that over with. And then we'll jump into the actual air combat and then do some uh, maneuvers and stuff like that. Now, as the allied player, you get to drop three supply tokens to your allied units to use with their artillery pieces. I've dropped two elsewhere on the board to the American Airborne, and they didn't have to worry about any AA fire coming in, but the Germans over here near Arnhem, they've got a couple of 88s. And the 88s do have the range to hit the plane coming in, trying to drop the supply. So I do have to roll for that real quick. So we are going to roll for them to see if the British get an extra supply token. And they do. Both AAs miss. I'm looking for ones on that. So this one's good. We'll drop the supply there. And that handles our supply phase. So I don't have to waste any more time on that. Now we're going to do the actual air phase. Oh, and to go ahead and address it, I went ahead and got the reinforcements put on the board. Normally you do that at the start of the movement phase, but since I'm filming, I just go ahead and get all the reinforcements for both sides, just put on the table and do it that way. So I don't have to worry about stopping in the middle of videoing to throw reinforcements all across the table. We'll just have them on there and run with it. So now we're going to roll for the Germans and the allies. The, which one did I do? We'll do the dark one here for the allies and the frosted one here for the Germans. Grab my chart. Remember, this is the chart that we are looking at to see what they get. The allies have a better selection of fighters uh, to get. The Germans only get bombers and it's only one bomber on the roll of a six. All right, so let's roll for it. All right, so the Allies are going to have four fighters and one bomber, and the Germans are going to, would they get a four? They are going to have two fighters. All right, so here. Here's where we're going to go with it. I am dedicating everything to up here where the entrance is. You see, I have already added in all the reinforcements that the allies are getting. There is a bunch of units coming in. I need those two damn Germans out of the way. Otherwise, I have to flank around them to try to maneuver units uh, onto the bridges. And actually, I might redeploy those reinforcements coming in, depending on how this comes uh, into play because I could send them around this way to, to shoot it. But anyway, we're going to do the air combat there. The one German fighter is going to go after it. So it's four allied fighters against one German fighter. But remember, one fighter can wipe out the whole lot if they win the combat. All right, so let's roll for our air combat, see what we got going, and the allies take it, which I thought was gonna happen anyway, but that works out. So we have seven points, seven points of air power against them, but we don't get to do it just yet because they do get to do their inherent AA fire against us. So hopefully there are going to be no ones rolled here. And there are no ones rolled. We still are rolling well. So they did not take out any of the air units. We've got seven points. Seven points against them in a city. City, I do believe, is a negative two. No. Oh, okay. So it's seven plus a D6 roll. Sadly, I do believe that means we only are going to kill both on a six. I was hoping to be able to get both. Yeah. Uh, because we're getting a negative two that drops us down to a five. So five plus a D six, which means we can only hit this, the two hits on the roll of a six, but we will get at least one hit no matter what. So come on, baby, 
Come on, big money daddy needs a new pair of dead Germans. No, that is not a dead German. Of course, I rolled the six when I didn't need it. That's all right. I got one German dead. Then, nope, I am not going to redeploy because I just remembered there's that little river running right through there where I'm knocking over the damn units. No. And that prevents movement, which sucks because now these guys are all pinned in. And you see the traffic jam that I was talking about that you're going to get with the units coming in this direction from one damn German just holding that crossroads and it's beating me the hell up. <sighs> okay. Okay, so we go from the air phase to the air supply phase, where I did the air supply phase. We go to movement phase and then combat phase. And I really don't want to do combat with the British units. I want to get them moving the hell out of the way. <sighs> okay, let me think of how I'm going to try to move these guys. Sadly, I'm not going to be able to move that group. They might just have to dump everything into combat, but I can move the others. All these mechanized guys might be able to make a decent run because that is, they're all 10 movement points. All right, so I got it marked out here. I know this group can flank around and they're basically driving through the dirt here outside of the zone of control and then scooting back onto the road because they're trying to beeline out and get away from this little German chokehold. And we're going to do the same thing with this group. All right, let me go ahead and get these guys moved. All right, don't forget I already rolled for these bridges previously, so don't have to worry about them blowing. These guys are going to do combat over here against that guy, though, because the artillery can lob their shields in from up to seven hexes away. The airborne uh, infantry can only do four, but these guys can do seven, so they can lob theirs in and really do some, some hurt against the single lone German soldier still holding that crossroads. But like I said, it's holding up. This is, this is all victory points here that are just sitting here. And on the next turn, they're going to keep coming in from this direction. They come in from these two roads only. So I have to have a path out of there. That was the best choice I made with those Germans because I held them up for like three turns. All right, I'm going to do some maneuvering over here because I see Germans coming in and I want to try to hold these bridgeheads to keep the Germans from getting onto them so I can keep this pathway open for the troops coming through. And they're there. Maybe get back up onto this city over here. Let's back it out a little bit. Yeah, there's a little city over here, some towns, because there's multiple trails coming in, multiple directions for the Germans to get over here. Uh, let's do some maneuvering here. Yeah, so basically I'm just trying to kind of spread the forces out so they're holding these roads as best as possible to at least delay the Germans if they push up in this direction through the, uh, through the center. All right, so I still have the 101st down over here. They're kind of spread around because, again, there's multiple directions the Germans can come in from. They can come in this main route. They can come in on these trails over here. So I've got to guard in every direction because, again, i got to keep this main path open for the uh, the forces to push through because, again, that's victory points. you you got to shove them up through this lane. It's the only real way to, to make any progress across this board. So I kind of got to hold all of this to give myself options. As far as the British go up here near Ornum, I was looking at it. I can cross at these ferries and the uh, the railroad crossing. But if I cross over onto this side of the map, that gives the Germans the ability to come up and cut them off. And they would be, uh, no, uh, blah. and they would no longer be supplied. So I can't do that per se. I have to control the whole 
village and I don't know what to do here. I just, I don't have a good plan here because the, the British lose their capabilities, their combat capabilities. If they move too far away from their landing, their DZ here, but they're kind of pinned in. And again, like I said, the way this game plays out, you're much better off defending than you are attacking. So I'd have to send all of these guys to swarm the German forces who are holed up in Arnhem. And I would be attacking with light artillery and infantry versus tanks, recon, 88s, and SS infantry. So ugh, it's, it's just not a good proposition. I think I'm just gonna keep holding the line with these guys until uh, until it plays out further and I can see which direction I want to go with them. All right, so let's do our, uh, our combat right up here, actually. Tilt it just a little bit, because it's this combat. We'll go ahead and get this one done real quick. I went ahead and laid the boards out that way just so we could have them both on the board and, and see them, but this one's kind of a, a foregone conclusion. All right, so we know the defender's gonna be getting two for defending. Uh, he doesn't get a bonus because he doesn't have any of the add ones. So let's add up for our attackers. All right, so we have five infantry attacking. We have one tank attacking into a city. So we only get one for him. We have mechanized. So we're going to get two for that one, I believe. Yep. Get two there and the artillery chipping in. So we have one, two, three, four. Four pieces of artillery. Oh, oh, oh. How do I love artillery? Let me count the ways. One, two, three, and the four. That's how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. I'll tell you what, that is beautiful. Beautiful amount of points right there. That pretty much just guarantees the hits because the Germans can't even come anywhere near close. So we have, I need to flip that over. That's supposed to be a two. So we have six, eight, eight plus 12 is 20. 20 right off the bat without even rolling the D6. He's dead. He's super dead. I don't even need to get the, uh, the dice tower out. Same colors, fours, oh, and that's, Beautiful. They got a five. <laughs> they got a no hitter. And they got a 21. They max it out. Five hits. Boom. Brat. And he is obliterated in the most beautiful fashion possible. But that finally does clear up this road. Here, the two Germans are wiped out. And I don't think they get any more reinforcements up here to this side of the board. So it should be clear sailing as the reinforcements come in. But just think of how many turns I'd be farther on if I hadn't wasted all these maneuver points because all these forces need to get up there and get across and be in supply. So it's not only getting them across that river, it's getting them across that river and still being able to trace a line of supply back to this point right here. So I have to hold the entire road all the way across. That's why all those airborne drops are all the way across. But let's get ready to do some uh, moving with the Germans. You guys can see their new reinforcements like that new 88 they just got. All right, so we're gonna run out the Germans movement real quick. We've got a couple of guys here, some reinforcements that they got up at the far side of the board. I was thinking of maybe shooting them this way. The only problem is the 82nd over here moved up and they've got artillery in the range is where I put them deliberately so they have bombardment, which is bad for them. They don't want to get in range of that bombardment. So they're going to have to scoot down and they've really got to stick to the road because trying to cut across these fields slows them down so much more. The big roads are half a movement point for cost and these trails are one movement point, whereas clear terrain, just these open fields, cost two. So it really behooves them to stick to the roads where possible. Yeah, we're definitely going to shoot down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They can make it to that city. 
And as you can see, we got a huge amount of reinforcements, a lot of infantry, a lot of, you know, it's mainly infantry. See, one more armored, and they got a artillery piece in that could actually do them some good too. The thing is they've got a armored, yeah, that armored's faster because it has 10 movement points, whereas the rest of this only has seven. So let's see, hold on, I'm bumping my camera because I'm so stretched out here. Every two hexes is one movement point. So that's one, two, and then the trails bring it back down to one. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can bring this armor all the way up here. And if that's nine, then the infantry can start making it up to this hex. So somewhere around here, again, want to bring them in to get in the way of the allies. All right, so I pulled the camera back so you guys could see where they were located, but up here's the 82nd, over there's 101st, and I'm trying to shoot this armor and artillery and infantry right here in the center. And my goal is to hopefully get somewhere over here and just lock down the area, maybe gain one of the bridgeheads or a town, get control of an area. So this main road, which is what they're going to need to get over there, right? That's that's the route to victory points. Have this blocked off with all these German guys. Because you saw how long it took me just to take out two. It, you can't waste turns as the allies, I don't believe, on the attack. You've really got to be shooting the uh, the victory point units across the map as quick as possible. And they need to get across this river over here just to even start getting victory points. Actually, it's a little worse than I thought to start getting victory points. They got to get across this river, all right? Uh, this one is, what is this? The Moss River down over here. This one's the Wall River. That's the one where they really need to start getting units across because getting them over here gets them into Victory Point Lane and then getting them past that, past this river, uh, that's the big one. If they get past there, they get bonus Victory Points, which is really good. But not only do they need to get over in this area, they need to get over in this area and be in supply, which means the Allied units have to control this whole region and uh, have control at least some of these bridges so they can be able to trace a line of supply all the way back. The, the allies just have so much of this board that they have to try to retain control of uh, to get victory points. The Germans just have to get in the way. And all right, I saw a spot that is gonna cause some issues for the allies. I am moving these German infantry over, cutting them through the grass and putting them in that town, which is right near the DZ for the 101st down over here. By putting them there, I am now threatening the drop zone here, the supplies that the allies can get. That is going to force the 101st over here to pull back and come after these two infantry who are now defending in a town. And it's gonna take uh, double these forces. Cause remember infantry do a whole lot better on the defense than they do on the offense. So this will work out really well. They're gonna to have to waste resources tossing in, uh, tossing in the, uh, the artillery pieces here on the attack and bringing infantry in off these bridges to attack the Germans. That is gonna be sweet. That is a good position. All right, perfect. That's gonna work for them. All right, last thing we got way up here in the corner is we have another 88 that has been brought in and some more SS troops. We are going to bring both of those forward all the way up to here. And they're going to be used again defensively. I'm just trying to hold this to keep the allies from being able to come across. But I'm going to do a bombardment with both of these 88s. Uh, one thing with bombardment is it has to be done individually. You can't combine artillery pieces for bombardment. You can when you're doing an attack or a defense, but you can't if you're just doing bombardment alone. So sadly, I have to do this as two separate attacks. And I think we'll target again the same thing over here into the forest uh, because it's the, the weakest spot. They get a minus two here in the city versus minus one there. 
And I'm just going to throw out the combat results table because I know it's just a two for the combat factor for each one of these 88s, which effectively becomes a one because of the modifier plus whatever is on the D6. So basically, they're hoping to get one hit through. They cannot be satisfied with retreats. Uh, I think that's going to be it. Yes, they do get one. So that's going to be a single hit. They got one. Let's roll for the second one. See what they get for that one. And that's a two. So that's not going to do it. So they do get a single hit through and a rondel is taken out. So they have lost a step over here from bombardment. Cool. So here at the bottom of the third turn, we do have a huge chunk of allied forces, but they're on the complete opposite side of the map where they need to be. They're right here at the start. They got held up for a couple of turns by just those two uh, German divisions. We're able to block them off in this little town, but now that they're finally wiped out, the allies are pushing through and they do have the ability to continue pushing through this road all the way up. However, the Germans are now pushing forward from this angle and their goal is to block off this road before this mass of allied units can push through and link up with the 101st with the bridges that they have captured. And then on top of all of that, way up here in the corner, the Germans have a huge mass of hard units. Uh, armor, a couple of 88s, SS divisions. I mean, just good group of guys up there. The British haven't really done anything. I've been too lax with them so far, not trying to do anything, but I don't want to attack with them. I'm afraid to lose what hold I have up there. And then we do have some German units over here that are guarding this side to keep the allies from trying to come in on the back end to get some victory points in this direction. So the allies are hoping to push through over here where the 101st are located to at least cross the Wall River here and gain some victory points because they have to cross it and, and maintain uh, a chain of supply. If they don't, then they're not getting those victory points and that actually becomes German victory points. And I gotta say that's it's quickly become one of my favorite aspects about this game is that that puzzle that comes into play as you're moving your units through the center and the fact that uh, the Germans don't really have to worry about being as offensive. They just have to worry about being roadblocks and getting in, in the way because the uh, the emphasis, the oomph, is all on the allied player as he has to slam across the board as quickly as possible to try to gain control of the bridges and get victory point units in the right places before it's too late. All right, well, that's going to be it for this video. You guys stay tuned. I'm probably going to be coming back with a final thoughts video on the game since we have played through a good number of turns. I might be able to squeeze out one more uh, turn, but I think it's probably going to be uh, final thoughts time. I've got a couple other games I got to get on the table. But for now, you guys take care, and I will catch you in the next one.